um, is some of the questions, and I'd like to branch off of yeah. that. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a question that you can answer or, or want to answer. I mean, you can maintain, I think, at any age, right? If you're doing the exact same thing over and over and over. I mean, maintain like that. I was just talking about that earlier. Like, there's some, like if you eat the exact same calories every day, and you do the exact same activity every day, and you balance out, you're going to stay the exact same, right? I mean, to a certain degree. As long as you're exercising, lip, you know, weightlifting and stuff like that, you see the exact same, you do the exact same thing, you're going to see the exact same way. It's when you start changing things is when you start really seeing change, whether it's uh, in taking more calories and not exercising or having any activity. And I mean, we're going to start storing those calories and that's going to become fat, right? So at that point, like, you know, you pick or choose. Like if you're active and let's say you're training weightlifting, you're increasing your calorie count, you can be building more muscle. So at that point, like, it really depends on, you know, what age you can. But, you know, why do you just want to maintain, though? That, that's the thing. Do you want to just maintain because, oh, I just like the way I look like this, and that's what I want to maintain? Because I think we should also be progressively going forward in some way, shape, or form. I mean, whether it's lifting two and a half pounds more, you know, the next week or, or the, you know, as we go – or doing more reps or, or adding different exercises into play or, or different activities. I think there's, there's things that you can go because, you know, once you've been on this earth for so long, things might start getting boring to you to a certain aspect. You might love things, but you're getting burnt out on that specific activity or, or you want to challenge yourself, you know, and as we get older, it's harder to challenge ourselves because a lot of people aren't in good shape. I seen the thing today, um, I don't know if you've seen this. It was a, a, a thing. It was an article basically saying that by 2030, a fit body will be worth a million dollars or the equivalent of a rare Rolex. Think about that. By 2030, they say in the next two years will be 80% to 90%, depending on how fast it goes, overweight and obesity. What do you think so, about that? Just so I understand. Um, you're saying that... A million, uh, it's worth a million because you're not paying for illnesses and, and stuff, or what, what does that mean? No, it's that rare. Oh, oh, I got you. I got it's you. It's gonna be that I... rare to have a fit body by 2030. Oh, that, that, oh, oh, we were talking about today with the VR. yeah, with the VR. Okay, so that's ironic that we talked about that. Let me, let me, uh, a couple things. One is it's, it's an interesting. It's maintaining to me, maybe we're moving into, a, I guess we're moving into a time because my belief was that it's, it's hard to maintain because we're aging. So no matter what you do, you have to be trying to get better um, or you're going backwards is, is my thought. But I think we're in a day and age where like Titan Medical is around to where it gets to, if anything is lowering or things are going right. off Titan medical can help you keep it there which would help you maintain that goal of whatever it is because my set my my statement was like can you can you maintain the the body fat where you want it and the muscle right. mass where you want it right and it's funny now there's it's funny there's finally enough research and stuff that, that that all these people that says no matter what you lose muscle and no matter what you 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 fade away it's like well no that's not true you can you can take in half the amount of protein and still retain the muscle absolutely uh, so it's yeah, an you're right. i don't know i don't know about maintaining i don't know where we are yet but it seems as though with something like titan medical it's probably more f for me to understand that it can happen now yep yep i mean listen it, it's definitely a lot easier to maintain or slow down the clock. They're like, yeah, because that's what we want to do. We essentially right. want to slow down the clock with aging, and that's you know physically, you know, you know mentally, the whole the whole thing. So, at that point, like we call know, it, the, we call it manage the decline. Yes, <laughs> that's manage good. the decline, right? right? So, yeah, if we're managing this, this decline, we're being preventive in some ways, or we're trying to make sure that we don't decline in some of these different ways like bone density or muscle mass or all these different things that happen as we age. So at that point, like being able to look at certain hormones per se and dialing those hormones in that might become deficient or out of balance and maybe causing some of these issues down the road. That's one way to slow things down 
to make yeah. sure your IGF one level is good and a good level. That's another way to slow things down too, as well. And then obviously taking care of yourself, eating, drinking, sleeping, um, doing activity, obviously those essentials along with it. But yeah, I, 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 there's, there's definitely something that you can do for yourself, no matter who you are to start slowing down that clock and start aging gracefully, I guess. And that's what we want to do, right? This, I, I think this is like the most perfect time to do that because of what's available now and what, right. what, what you guys are doing, but just what, what health is doing and the understanding of health. If you find the right research and, and uh, understand nutrition is medicine, if you're one of those people, I think you could really slow it down and really change things. And you could be that, you know, Brad Pitt at 60, still doing what he does, looking like he does. It's yeah. incredible. It's uh, amazing. Yeah. Jumping forward to your, your statement about uh, the in-shape body, I, I think we saw something like I, we talked about it a month ago, if I'm correct, that there is... Uh, I think it's like a, is it 5% that you're going to be this tall, this in shape, making this kind of money. It's like such a small, small percentage. Yes. And then th that clarifies what you just said it is the fact that it will be as rare, be the in rare. shape. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, cause yeah. think about it. Anybody anybody can get in shape it doesn't matter how much money you have it doesn't matter i mean your disability maybe but if you don't have any disabilities you know i have no excuses i mean you literally could get in shape if you wanted to and it does not cost anything to do like it doesn't mean you have to be jacked up you can just be in shape that means just lean you know maybe a six pack you know nice lean muscle on you and at that point um yeah, it's it's crazy to even think this. It's crazy even to think like back when I was a kid, like I, I remember and I told my son this. I'm like, you know, it's crazy because I asked him, I said, How many in your how many in your class are like he's like pretty much the whole class are overweight and obese? So oh, at that point, he's like, There's wow. not too many fit people. There's like he's like, there's one basketball player, yeah, he's fit, but pretty much the whole class is is just not there. So I remember looking around class, like when I was little, and I started thinking back about it. I'm like, man, like there was only like one in my class that was overweight and that guy got picked on for being the overweight kid. All the other kids were not overweight at all. I mean, so it's just crazy how it's just came to this point where everybody, a majority of people, and you see it when you go out, that's the, that's the biggest thing. And if you don't see it, start opening your eyes. Cause I guarantee the next place you go, you'll see what I'm talking about. I don't care. Yeah, I always say, is. just open your eyes at the airport. Don't keep your head down, look around Dude. and then, and, and then if you're that individual that says, hey, I'm, I'm doing good for 35, and then you go to an airport and see all the 35-year-olds, you're yeah. probably, you're not going to want to say that again. No. Because that's not a, it's not a good average. Now, I understand this. I understand that, that the last four years, almost five years now, has been an absolute crazy scientist, uh, uh, saying what's the word it's science no, no, not, no, it's like, a, like a movie like an unreal yeah and so i understand people were locked down and, and probably got off their game which i understand yeah. but man you can get back into shape in 12 weeks yeah which speaks okay. of like january 1st is coming yeah why don't, why don't we all as, as a, a crew and a team of titan medical let's all plan that we push for january 1st to be in shape yeah that should be a goal for anybody and everybody that's watching today all right and, and you can see right here we got the number up there if you guys need help or guidance titan medical is there to help you guys out yes yep 727-389-3220 car text <laughs> right there off off the bottom of the screen or on john's or my side right there yes. you can see that um jeff will you throw up the link to to the website there we go. There we go. There's there's the website. And for you guys out there that heard what John was saying earlier is uh, we're, we got into discussion about can you maintain? And uh, uh, I think this is probably the best time for you guys to maintain. And then the second thing was Johnny was talking about the rarity of being in shape. Right. What can they do to start this process to say, I mean, hey, I'm done with this? Start, this start this week. 
we, we got the blood test, the blood work special all the way to, through Halloween. So at that point, I think that would be the first thing to do. Obviously, if, if you call or text us, we can see for a variety of different things without a blood test. But I think blood testing could be the first step should be possibly for you to do just to see what's going on, to know what's going on. At that point, to schedule a consultation with our medical provider to go through everything and all your options, go through your health history, your family health history, your symptoms, what you're trying to achieve. And at that point, if you have the blood test, you're going to go over that in full. And then make a personal recommendation about what your options are and educate you about what it's going to do for you, whether it's all the benefits, if there's any negative side effects, making sure that you're informed and educated about what you're going to be doing. So that would be the first thing I would recommend for you guys to do. So you guys can car text us. You guys go to the website, go to the new patient paperwork, fill it out. Once it's filled out, we will contact you and see wh which path you want to go down. Or if you just want to initially just get started with a blood test, just call or text us directly. It takes five minutes to do. It's very simple, very easy. And we get you all set up wherever you're at in your zip code nationwide. I was talking to uh, an ex-pro football player yesterday. Um, I'd say in his early 40s. Good size guy. Um, mm -hmm. uh, played D line. He's about, I would say, Mike's about. What do you think? Six four, six five. Mike, on the incline when we went back at the end of the workout, Mike used to play. Yeah, he was a D line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good size guy, right? Yeah, he's he's three fifteen. Carries it well. Yeah, so I don't. I think he's definitely six five, six six. Wow. Early forties. About 315 but carries it well but can he and i agreed that i thought a good weight for him would be 250. now it, it was surprising somebody at such a high caliber of, of life financially uh business-wise athletically knew so little about nutrition uh, so he went in, uh, I guess he got some blood work done, but this is from the family doctor, obviously. Mm -hmm. I call mm -hmm. that pregnant, whatever that would be considered. Yep. Um, and he said his creatins came back uh, high. And he said, the doctor said, hey, be really, really careful with your protein intake. And I said, yeah, that's your family doctor. Yeah. Because understanding one main thing is that he takes in 60 grams of protein a day. Now, if nobody understands that. 60 grams, that's it? 60 grams for anybody that's here would be two oh. protein drinks. Now, yeah. understand he is a good 50 pounds bigger than I am. He's a huge human, but he's taken in 60 grams. So now what you got is you got the breakdown of the muscle from him working out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing to recover off of. Mm -hmm. Because he's not in any way doing a proper nutrition to where his muscles can recover. Right. You know, you can sleep all you want, but 60 grams of protein is not retaining anything. Damn, dude. That's, a, that's pretty low. So what would you say to him about the creatins, his family doctor saying, listen, you need to, br you need to take down your protein more. I mean, yeah. I don't think, that, that's, I don't think that's correct. I, I mean, I, I, listen, I'm not his doctor, so I'm not going to say, oh, your doctor should have said this or that. Like, we just don't do that. But I'll say that. But yeah, but at this point. I'll say the I'm, doctor's an absolute idiot. I'm saying for what we would come from, we would say, no, that's that's absolutely false. Like, listen, 60 grams of protein is very, it, it's 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 not going to do anything. It, it's a drop in, the, in, in a, a bucket, you know, for him, especially if he's that big. I mean, obviously, listen, we need to support the muscle that's there. We need to get in enough protein in our diet to be able to, to satisfy that muscle as far as that goes. Now, you know, going overload, like three to one, basically, I don't think that's a good idea, you know, if he's having these issues. But then we need to talk about, listen, did he train before he went in and got this blood test? Did he not train? Did he drink water? Did he not drink water? I mean, these are things that can affect it. But, I, I mean, listen, that's the first thing they say to people that have kidney issues. You better get off red meat. Right. But when you start, and this is so crazy when you start looking, cause I had to look through all this cause my dad's in stage four. So I'm like, all right, so let me look at what they can eat. And in there it says meat. It's like, it's crazy. So it's really contradiction, contradicting to what the provider says to what the pamphlet says. I think honestly, everybody's different. And like me, I can eat meat all day. That's not going to affect my kidney levels like that. Some people it might. I'm not going to speak on everybody, but majority of people, I don't think it's because of the protein intake that they're having. 
And it, there's some other problem that's going on that's damaging their kidneys and really putting stress on it. Like, unless they're being excessive in protein eating, right? And that's it. I mean, I, I can't see that ever happening just because the protein intake is there. Unless it's an extreme amount of protein every single day. And I don't think he was doing that. Yeah, I said to him, uh, first off, understand that you, you train like an animal. You train all the time. So that's right. going to throw off the numbers uh, as right. well. Also, you're not recovering. So you're going to have muscle breakdown more than the typical guy. Also, yeah. if a doctor goes off of his his book knowledge and not the individual himself. Right. It's not a good doctor. No. If, it's, if it's a doctor that was actually there going, listen, I know you. I know that you train well. I know that you're doing all this stuff. Let's take a look at your nutrition and see what you're doing there. I'm not the guy to talk to, but let's go do that for a month and come back and do another blood test. Yeah. Um, and that's what I said to him. I said, listen, it's great that your doctor tells you this, but you're taking it verbatim and then you're, then you're going off of that. You're going to lower your protein from 60 grams to 30 grams. How, how does that even work? It's a great job. This is you're, you're listening to him and this is what you're going to do. Instead of you going, listen, don't go to him. Go to like a provider, like yeah. take medical. And I yeah. said that. And I gave him the number. Yeah. And I said, go over there, do your blood work. But then take responsibility, change your nutrition, and then go back and see what it looks like in a month. And then go back another month after that. I said, it's, it's yeah. a cool discovery when you find out what your body can work off of and how you change it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. don't it's be just true. a pilot right yeah no for sure i mean honestly like what was his previous blood test at like you know because is this something that's just an anomaly just popped up on this one has it been previous where's it been is it trending up trending down this is stuff that i like to tell people and you know i tell them like after if they don't then i'm like hey from this point forward start taking a copy of all your blood tests and hold on to them so you can kind of see where it's at what it's been doing you know from that point to wherever you're at so yeah, definitely need to look at it. And you definitely need somebody that is trained to look at something like this. I mean, listen, you give a general practitioner, you show them ALT and AST liver functions and they're in triple digits, they're going to freak out. They're going to freak out. Us, we see it. It happens. It is what it is. We can fix it. Liver is a little bit easier for us to fix in kidneys uh, as far as levels, but you know, it is what it is. And doctors have no training in nutrition unless they went by themselves and done their own course, but through med school, they have no no training whatsoever on nutrition at all. So at that point, like, I really wouldn't be listening to a doctor on how to eat, especially if they don't look the part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I hear you. Speaking of nutrition, someone here says, uh, what is the best way to calculate your daily macros? Uh, so many different formulas out yeah. there. What's your, yeah. like, I don't, I don't know of a lot of, What's what's a lot of there's like a 70, 30, 30. I mean, there's, you know, protein, 70 fats, 30 carbohydrates, 30. I mean, you can really start breaking this down, but there's a, there's calculators out there that will break down what your macro should be total by your body weight, your height and some other some other things they they, uh, they take. That's pretty cool. There's also some really good apps that you can scan anything, whether it's Man. a McDonald's hamburger or, you know, a regular chicken breast that you got from Publix. And it'll give you kind of what those are. So that's the best way that I tell people to do it. Um, I kind of know what mine are and just eat that every single day. I mean, that's that's the easiest way, right? Simple and easy. Yeah, I, I think it goes back to we've talked about this a few times, but you just take your body weight, um, what your goal should be. I guess you would be like, um, let's say you want to be 200 pounds. So I just take in 200 grams of protein. I would make sure that your fats are in a good range, that your healthy fats, and then your carbohydrates will kind of go off of where you're at right now. You know, um, a lot of programs or computers will tell you to take in like 250 or 300, but unfortunately, I don't know how you set up your body if you've ran away from carbohydrates or how your body functions with carbs. Yeah, I would just keep it low at first and see how you function, and then keep moving it up as as best you can. Yep. Depending it's about progressive on overload, age. progressive loading at that point. Same thing. Yeah. See how progressive it works, progress. and then just keep a track on it. And make sure that you can uh, keep ahead of the body plateauing. Be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we got: Is water depleting the best way to make your abs pop? You think? 
Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, a combination of that with make sure that your sodium prior to when you do manipulate the water uh, is up, and then uh, pull it away as you come down. Yes, yes, <laughs> having abs, but I'm thinking this kid right here, he's got some sick abs. But yeah, I would just manipulate it. Your body yeah. changes off of manipulation. Do you want to get bigger? Yeah. More calories, manipulate it to feed and eat more and get stronger. Yeah. So true. Definitely or joy Johnny that. does. Johnny is on point 24 seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never, I've never depleted my water like that at, at all. I think you don't need time, to, you got great abs. You know, I, I haven't depleted it like that. I think I didn't take enough water and I never like, I don't like go crazy on sodium. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, there's been days, you know, before, let's say a couple of years ago, um, you know, some of the, some of the old school tricks from back in the day when they used to introduce alcohol, and they would do one or two shots the night before, yeah. and they, you know, they come up and then be a little bit more peeled. Um, you know, I've, I've done that before. You know, I thought it worked all right. But I don't know. I just I stay consistent. I, I guess you know, I guess not drinking water would probably be better in, in uploading the sodium, like you're saying. I'm going to try that. I've never tried it before. I never, well, you I never still drink that. water, but it's the manipulation and the percentage of. I want, to, I want to do this one time, one time with you, just to see it, just how it would affect me or how it would look. A little, a little dry out? A little, little dry out. Yeah. I might, might as well try to do it. I've never, never officially done a dry out. Just, I just do consistently the same things over. <laughs> and I'm maintaining <laughs> You're, you're doing it right, brother. You're yeah. doing it right. I know that Trying. Drew always looks like he's uh, drying out. He, he yeah, always he looks incredible. He does. He's always on point, too, for sure. Uh, all right. So uh, feeling like I haven't had the motivation like I used to in the gym. I'm 35. What are some tricks to stay motivated? Thanks, Mike. So you want to go and I'll go? Oh, go for it. I, I want to hear what the master okay. says here. All right. All right. So listen. If you've lost motivation like you had and you used to, and you're 35 years old, this could be low testosterone levels. This could be unmotivating you. Um, you're not, you know, feeling the same way you used to. Probably body's probably changing. If this is the case, and you're, a, you know, you're having some of these symptoms and even fatigue, a, a part of it, or not recovering like you probably should. Um, at that point, I would blood test. Go through the blood test, see what's going on. Right, because there's some underlying problem here. If that's not a problem, like, hey, listen, I'm just not motivated to go to the gym. I mean, I guess you have to get there and, and start getting motivated, right? Like something's going to motivate you, whether it's the way that you look, the way that you feel, the way that you want to look, I guess. Um, that should be motivating to you to want to get in there and to get your body to where it needs to be. I mean, that's always motivating to me. Like, I'm like, all right, listen, like, especially when I was down, you know, when you're down from surgeries, like you can't do anything that motivates the hell out of you. You're like, I can't wait. I'm just chopping at the bit. So at that point, like, you know, you got to get in there and, you know, 50% of the battle is getting to the gym. The other 50% is bringing the right attitude to the gym and training with intensity, not just going and walking through and going through the routine and, you can have the best routine in the world. Mike might write you the best routine in the world. If you're not bringing the intensity when you go there, you're not yeah. going to be getting what you want. Not so, that. you know, it's it's not a it's not a chore. It's it's a pleasure, right? At that point, you should be in there and want to do it because ultimately it is affecting you. I say this to Sharice or Peter or whatever when they're training. I'm like, this ain't for me. This is for you. Like you're getting the ultimate benefit out of this. Not me. Like, I could care less. Like, I just want you to be healthy and, and be strong. But at that point, like, you know, that's that's what I think a lot of people miss. It's a lot of people are scared to go there. They don't want to be around people that might be fit, per se, or they, they're uh, uh, embarrassed the way they look or whatever it may be. But, you know, I see a lot of people in there really pushing it. I know January we're going to have a ton of people pushing it, right? But before that, that those are the, 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 the true real deal people. Like, if they start before that and they start working at it, by January, you're gonna have to be so many, so many light years ahead of those people that you, you know that you see every day. In the you know, and at that point, um, that's the way to be. I think that's the way it motivates. Um, for me, uh, there's just not enough gratitude in your life. You're 35. Uh, when you're 45, you're gonna look back at this moment and go, "Holy sheesh, 
I had it good. I could have been taking care of myself, investing in myself. Um, so it's, I think it's gratitude. You don't wake up going, holy shit, I got two arms, two legs. I function. I can take care of myself. I can get to the gym. I can do this stuff. Um, yeah, that has to switch. Yeah, like Johnny says, it's it's not motivation. You, you need some kind of like, holy shit, I got one life. Let Literally. me live the fullest. Let me take care of the vessel that's going to get me through this next, hopefully, 60, yeah. 70 years. Yeah. Um, but if you're not taking care of it at 35, yep. you're just not appreciating the life. Uh, yeah, you got enough. a lot of life to live, man, at 35 yeah. for sure. A lot of life. I mean, even if you're only going to live to 70 per se, you still got 35 years to go. You know, it's, that's a long time. It's definitely a long time. And you got to be able to move at that time. Somebody Absolutely. broke down age. They broke down. Was that you, Jeff, that saw that? They broke down the age. Well, uh, when you age the fastest? No. In, in, in life, you got 75 years, right? The average is 75 years. Right. But for the first five or 10 years, it, it's you're, you're a baby or a child. So those, those are removed. Um, and mm -hmm. then you got a portion of when you're a senior, uh, a senior citizen, again, you don't function well, uh, you know, the brain and everything. And, and so there's a portion of where you don't do much at that stage. And they kind of just kind of removed all these years that aren't quality years. Mm -hmm. and, and they come back to those like, you know, 18 to 30 and going, you really get this many great, great solid years. And when somebody broke that down, that I saw this a couple of weeks back, I was like, holy shnikes, I'm so glad I took care of my health. So I got a little bit more, but just to think about that and, and to go really, there's a small portion, a small window of energetic and body working with you and you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring and not everybody's lucky to live till 75. So. You never know. So get up, get moving, be appreciative that you can do this. And if, like Johnny said something, I thought that was great. You know, you don't want to go to the gym uh, because of, you don't want to go there because of something like uh, people are in shape and you're not in shape right now. Nobody cares. Get your butt to the gym, get there, kick it into gear, push it. Um, it doesn't matter what nobody else says about you or does about you. It's about your life and about you doing your best. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of longevity, I feel like I need to get in peak shape before a certain age. I'm 27 now. And hold that shape. How should I attack this? Great start. Uh, great job. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that you should just get in the incredible and best shape of your life when you're 20s um and then uh i don't think you should uh approach the second part like you have here is uh i'd uh, hold that um big sorry giant. i don't know what happened i literally don't know what happened i think jeff just kicked you out for being too jacked <laughs> thanks jeff so i was just saying I agree with this kid that yeah, in your 20s, in, you know, teens and 20s, you should just mm -hmm. get in the best shape of your life. Mm -hmm. You should just kick ass at mm -hmm. living and setting yourself up. Mm -hmm. But then afterwards, I think that you should um, mentally control it to where you're not going psycho, mm -hmm. but still trying to get a little better over time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is, is I think, the best approach to really live a... a, a a fruitful life, I guess they say, in my day. Johnny, what's your take on getting in shape at that stage? Take advantage of those years. Dude, those are the good years for sure. I mean, those are the, those should be your best feeling years almost. 20s to 30s, you should be feeling good. But 20s especially, you're, you're, you're still growing, man. You're still going through genetics to a certain extent on the early 20s side. And then after that, you can really, really start packing on some good quality lean mass. And over time, like Mike said, don't go crazy. Put on a couple pounds of good quality lean mass every single year and keep it. And at that point, you'll be set up for a great future. 
And especially if you keep, you know, being active and, and weightlifting and stuff like that, you know, when you're 50, 60 years old, you look like Michael Hearn, hopefully. But even if you don't, you'll be in really good shape and you'll be able to, to keep some of that quality of lean muscle. Even if you lose some, you know, you still got a, a good amount on you. They said even with cancer patients, the more muscular you are, the better chance you have to live because you'll deteriorate, yes, but you'll eat away a lot of that muscle, but that muscle will protect you from, you know, deteriorating to nothing if you have a lot of it. So, you know, it's just one thing. And after so long, they say that, you know, you can't grow as much muscle as you could, you know, when you're in your 20s and 30s because the cells. So at that point, you know, you're not going to have as many and they're not going to be able to grow like that. So unless you're taking different things, you know, that could happen. But other than that, man, you're going to have to you have to jump on it early. Jump on it early and, and be cautious of what you're doing. That's the other side, flip side of it. Don't go crazy like on your joints. I'm, I'm like prime candidate for this at 43 years old. Total short replacement I need. Don't do that because in your 20s, you're like, oh man, just, I mean, just, everything's going to feel great. You recover, but I'm telling you, you start abusing, abusing, abusing into your 20s, into your 30s, in your 40s, you're going to start feeling it and really paying the price from there and on out. Yeah, I agree with you. And we were talking about that again today. We were talking about because uh, we were training with a 20 year old. And uh, I, I just said, take your time on the warm ups. Even though we were training together, he didn't notice uh, the warm ups I was doing relative to him. And again, I fully understand 20 and I fully understand waking up like you could jump on the wrestling mat without stretching right. and go. Right. Trust me, I was that kid. I would warm up on squats with 225 or uh, 245 because we used hundreds and 245 on, on deadlifts just from the start. Didn't warm up with anything less than that. So I understand being that young kid and stuff, but I think warm ups are a great thing. And so just going back to the youngster, um, be smart, train smart. Yep. Be good. I'm 51, female with RA. Will weightlifting help strengthen my bones? I've already lost 30 pounds and feel great. Just want to tone up and feel stronger. So, yeah, absolutely. Weightlifting is definitely going to help strengthen things. And then, I guess, check your hormones. Make sure those are good. Yeah. RA is rheumatoid arthritis. So, yeah. at that point, that that sucks. But the best way you can get around some of that is, like, you know, anti-inflammation. And I'm not talking about, like, NSAIDs. But, like, glutathione is a really good one for uh, rheumatoid arthritis. That's another good one you can use. Um, nice also, job. TB and BPC as far as inflammation from the RA, that could pretty much help. I, I know my dad's got it, so that's what he uses. Um, and you've already lost 30 pounds, man. That's awesome. So at that point, you're well on your way. You know, Maybe there's some more improvements you can do, and uh, maybe you can start expediting a little bit more weight loss to get to whatever your goal is. Yeah, and 51 is a great age. I, I know of a 70-year-old powerlifted woman, a 70, 80-year-old powerlifting woman and she doubled her bone density and she didn't start lifting until she was 56. Wow. I just it's cool to see but you want to have some fun go on the internet and just type in uh weightlifting for women over 50 and you're going to see some incredible studies and write-ups talking about that's the number one thing for you to do for yeah. bone density um and and so again I know that the uh Arthritis is a pain in the butt, but movement, movement, movement is the best thing for arthritis. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It really is. It's like a car. You want to keep it active and moving. Um, so one guy in here said all this one. Oh, wait, here's another one. You got one. Go ahead. 25 years old, 5'11", 180 pounds, 21% body fat. Goal is 205 to 210, 12 to 15% body fat. What's the ideal nutrition path to get to this goal? Okay. So um, I, <laughs> this really depends on a lot of different things, I guess. Like, where's the, I mean, I guess we see where he's at right now at 21% body fat. So what do we need to do here? We want to get up in weight and we want to lose body fat. So what are we going to do? Obviously, we're going to weight train, but nutritional path to get to this goal. I don't know, Mike. I mean, for me, I mean, honestly, I'm not going to lower carbs too much, but I probably lower carb just a little bit for him. I don't know where it's at currently, but at that point, like, I don't know. I mean, I would go with obviously a high protein diet, um, low fat, maybe mid carbohydrate. Just really depends, I guess, on him. 
how he's doing carbohydrates already right now. What about you? What do you think? Uh, I think the realization to accept that 21% body fat is fat and that for he's, uh, Clint Eastwood said it best, a man's got to know his limitations. At this point, you got to realize that you are overweight um, and you're only 180. So I would recommend you slice and dice and get rid of some of that body fat before you start picking goals in this sense. I think right now, just get sliced. Get as ripped as you can because you're 25. Uh, you don't want that extra weight around your stomach into your 30s because of a uh, future problem with your skin uh, would be the number one goal. I would disregard the 205, 210, 12% body fat right now. Just focus on getting sliced. Yeah, you want to be lean before you really start growing like that, you know, because if anything, you're just going to pack out more fat if you start, you know, increasing calorie count like that. I mean, if you're already 21% body fat, I mean, this is something you need to look at for sure. I mean, yeah. see if you can get that body fat down to 7%. Yeah. You know, get it down there, get ripped. Now, what's your body weight going to be? Obviously, we can tell some kind of weight differences here. It's going to be, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty low for a 5'11 guy. Yeah. But there's a thing called skinny fat. And right now, that's where you're sitting at. Yeah. Um, so better keep to be skinny and dice and skinny fat for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, think keep what the lifting. Scale says. Keep lifting, get sliced. Take the next January 1st, you can start bulking up. Yeah. Because you'll be sliced to the bone, bone January 1st. Everybody will look at you going, holy cow, you look better now than ever. Yeah. And you might be, truth of the matter is, you might be 155. 160 yeah. at, at 5'11", almost six foot. It is, but it's a, it's Brad Pitt. Brad yeah. Pitt, 5'11". Yeah. He was once yeah. uh, 155, 158 for a uh, fight club. Fight club? That small. Get out of here. And he looked that great. Wow. I, uh, listen, I don't drunk. take that away from anybody. Like somebody said there about the, the one meal a day thing doesn't work. And you were telling about Frank eating one meal a day and the way he looks too as well and his age. I'm like, man, that's that's... That's pretty good. Will you check to see if uh, we can let them get out there? I'm not sure if we can or not. I don't know if they're still here. Let's see what we got here. Have any tips on how to get back from Achilles rupture as an athlete? TB500, BPC157 for sure. That would be your only ticket. Other than that, you know, maybe yeah, IGF-1. You can utilize that along with BPC and TB500 to hopefully, you know, and then you're going to have a hell of a lot of rehabilitation, man. I mean, for sure. And Talk about that, the, the emotional part, because I, if physically, Johnny can get you there to be healed yep. and stronger than ever. Yep. Yep. The emotional part, obviously, you got to you got you to be you gotta be strong minded for sure. You yeah. Make sure that your uh, make sure that your T level is good. Make sure it's healthy. Make sure you're in the right position, because. Yep. Uh, we were just talking to a youngster a couple weeks back, Johnny and I, and he felt like his life was over because he was injured. And the guy wasn't even 20 years old. Yep. So, yeah, make sure that everything's working fine. Make sure the body's working fine. Uh, but Johnny kicked it out of the park. The TB, BPC. Yeah, BPC, maybe some IGF-1. Add in there, you'd be good to go. What's another one that you see, Johnny? You got better eyesight uh, than I. Best way to lose belly fat and gain muscle. I have a little bit of belly fat and I'd like to lose, but I still want to keep building my muscle. Well, I mean, you can do testimorellin. It'll, you know, start taking out that belly fat. But obviously, listen, with this, you're, you're obviously going to want to weight lift. Um, and you're going to want to start looking at the nutrition because I don't know what the nutrition looks like. But that would be your best bet for a recomposition type play to build the muscle, maybe get rid of some of the belly fat if that's the only thing you have. Now, if you just have belly fat, this could be a problem with your hormones too as well. There could be mm -hmm. something that's off, and that's what's causing the belly fat to be there. It happens on females, happens on guys, same thing. So at that point, I would say, listen, maybe get your blood checked, see where those levels are at, maybe something's off, because that could be easily taken care of, and that could probably, hopefully, solve the problem. And if you are changing the lifestyle and doing the other things, then you can be well on your way to get – Less belly fat and gain lean muscle. Yeah, the only thing I'd add on there is is most people have to stop the twofold. Do the one thing, take care of the one problem, then move on. And just like the kid before this was, uh, 
he's 21% body fat and wants to be 30 pounds heavier, but with less body fat. You're trying too many things. It, it takes time and it takes such dedication to change one way. You're trying to do two ways. It's like, and so the same thing here, if you got some belly fat, get rid of the belly fat, retain, retain your muscle. And then after you get that belly fat off, then you can start building again. But if you're trying to do two folds, you're not going to change. You're trying to take in enough calories that you can build muscle, but you want to lose the weight. Johnny said some great points. You know, you can start the Tesla Memorial and uh, mm -hmm. pop up the IGF and those things. Yeah. And the AOD. Yeah, AOD is all those things. Ones. And maybe you're not training hard enough that the extra calories may help you. But I would just be be smart about just take care of the one aspect at times because it's quicker too. Yeah. And also, with what Johnny just said, you, you do that for eight weeks, I'll guarantee that that lower abs are sliced. Oh, yeah. For sure. You're a different beast. And then at that point, you'd be like so hyped up going, wow, Johnny, what else can I do now to go the other way? Yeah. I mean, that's how it is, man. You, you accomplish one goal, one mission, go on to the next one for sure. Let me see. If go, go further on that because of the fact that I don't think people realize when the body is working with you, how fast it can change. Yeah. I mean, the best example I give to people is a, like a race car or a regular car. Something's off in that. It's not going to go its best lap. It's not going to run like it should. And the body's the exact same way. And if everything is working in a harmonic balance and working together like it should and optimize, you're going to get the best result. Your metabolism is going to be working the best it can. Mind's going to be working. The body in general is just going to be where it should be, optimally working at those levels. So, I mean, that's that's the most important thing and making sure everything there's nothing broken down or everything deteriorating in there that you can fix per se. If you fix those different things and you get to the root of the problem with these things, then you're going to have a, a good result and you're going to get to where you want to go. And here's a great one for you, Johnny. Sure. Thinking about getting my blood tested. Are there any specific biomarkers I should consult my doctor about to cut fat and make sure T is optimized? So like I said, our in-depth blood, blood test covers all this and more. And your general practitioner doctor is probably not going to run all these blood tests, but if they do, Here's a quick run down that list. A CMP, 14, it's a comprehensive metabolic panel. It has 14 different tests in there, highlighted tests in there, EGFR, BUN, creatinine, AST, ALT, fasting glucose. That's liver, kidneys, and then your fasting glucose. That means the sugar that's in your body currently. After that, a complete blood cell count, a CBC. That's going to do white blood cell count, red blood cell count, hemoglobin, hematocrit. You want to check those levels, especially if you're on testosterone make sure they're okay. White blood cell count is going to check if there's infection, non-infection, or so on. After that, we want to go down that list. If you're a guy, we're going to test PSA. At that point, that's going to be for your prostate. We're going to see where your prostate's at. This is very important, especially for guys, no matter what age you are, from 20 on up, because prostate cancer is on the rise. Young people are getting prostate cancer. Old people are obviously getting prostate cancer. And we want to catch this if we can in the earlier stages, if any. So at that point, when you blood test, we'll see where that level's at. And if that level does come back at a certain range, then we know that, listen, you might need to go see a specialist about that. After that, we want to do a full cholesterol panel, right? Total cholesterol, triglycerides, HDL, good cholesterol, LDL, bad cholesterol ratio. After that, we're going to go into a full thyroid, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, T3, T4. After that, we're going to get the free and total testosterone levels. Then we want progesterone. Then we want IGF-1 levels, and we want B12 levels, and that's just your general in-depth blood test for a male for $130 nationwide, wherever you're at. So I don't even think you'd, it'd be worth your weight to pay the copay, to go into the doctor, to get the slip, so there's go my back question. to the lab, yeah. come so back in, pay another copay, get those results, which might take weeks, and then that blood work? you might not even get what you want. So at that point, okay. I would just go through us. It'd be a lot easier, a lot smoother, a lot more simplified. Would it, would it, I, I'm not sure Mona handles the uh, the doctor. Uh, so it would be the copay or or you would have to pay for it outright. Yes. So, so you go in there. Talking to her. Yeah. And this guy seems like he wants to go through his doctor. Yes. And well, I don't think you, his doctor uh, will, will, will do all that. So a lot of people want to use their insurance because they pay for insurance, right? Or right. the company provides great insurance. Okay. Why pay if I have insurance? Okay, so that's a great question. The reason you're paying because, one, 
if someone does come back on that blood test that's wrong, now it's on your permanent record. The Titan, that's not going to happen. Two, you're going to be able to get the blood test a lot quicker and the results expedite a lot faster. That means you get the slip, you go and get your blood checked. We have it in three to four business days instead of weeks in between because possible appointment times and all that other good stuff. The co-payments, you're probably going to pay your co-payments. Some people don't. Most right. people do. And even for the blood testing and things that go on, they have a deductible that they have to pay for first before the insurance starts picking up right. some of these things. Then can your provider run these tests? Well, the real reason, the real person that decides that is the insurance company, not the provider, because the insurance company. When I say that again, that your, your, your provider decides, decides not, not your doctor. No, no. So your insurance company decides what tests are going to be covered by what the provider gives them as far as an ICD-10 code. That's an insurance code they do for billing. Now, when the insurance company gets that code and they see what they wanted, they'll look at it and be like, all right, this is okay. Or, you know what? We don't think this is valid. Now we're going to push this back. So when they push it back, it doesn't go to the provider and for, oh, I have to pay for this. It gets pushed back onto the patient. And then they have to pay the full cost of that blood test, which is not discounted. It's very expensive. That could be a couple hundred bucks just for one little test. Wow. So these are just some of the different things of the reason why you don't go through insurance for some of these different things. Now, listen, if you're sick, you know, you got a problem like that, go to your general practitioner and they can run a CBC on for you. And that's going to get covered by insurance. And it's going to tell you if you have infection or non-infection, you know, certain things use your insurance for, but there's certain things that probably not going to be the best way to do things. Um, and it's going to be a lot of hoops you have to jump through for a lot of different things. Even if it was testosterone per se, 264 to 916 total guys, right? So at 265, you come back and you're normal, but you're at the bottom of the barrel. You're one point above the low deficient range. Insurance company's eyes, doctor's eyes, you are normal. You are normal. It doesn't matter. Well, doc, you know, this, this is not working. Well, no problem. Here's some Viagra that's getting covered by insurance. Doc, I don't feel good. I just don't feel right. Well, here's some antidepressants to get your mood up. And then they're going to send you on your way. Now, have they fixed the problem? No. Have they masked the problems? Yeah, they've masked the problems, but you're still going to have these problems if you don't take these medications or even worse down the line. So it's something to really get a hold of. You know, it's, it's not worth taking the shortcut route, I guess, in any of these ways, because obviously, listen, this is your body that's going to affect in the long run. You want to do the best for yourself you possibly can. And if you don't, I feel sorry for you. You really should. If you don't feel like that, I think you should really reevaluate yourself and give yourself a little bit more kudos to, you know, to be a better, you know, to be better you. Johnny crushing it, man. <laughs> Get to your game, Captain. I'm sorry, guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks Thank for hanging, so much. Johnny. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Absolute, brother. All right, I'll talk, talk to you, you later, though. Johnny, crushing it like always. Um, I'm going to go in. I have my uh, yearly check tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to – I'm curious. It's my yearly check with the doctor, and I'm curious on what they do besides – I'll guarantee they'll, uh, you know, check my blood pressure, um, listen to my heart for a second or something. Um, but I'm curious to see what they'll do. I'll let you guys know later this week on uh, if they do any blood work or anything like that. Because I'm just curious on what a provider or your your family doctor actually does on that yearly checkup. Do you remember last year? They do nothing. They do nothing, right? They, you go in. They. How you feel? Yeah, Good. Check okay. Your, your your heartbeat and pulse, and then like, okay, you're alive. Go home. Blood pressure. Little blood pressure. Nice <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Peace out, guys. Peace.